My name is Susan Ashworth. I live alone in this old two-bedroom flat. I rarely go outside. Some would say it's a lonely life, and I guess that's true, but I don't like people's company. Not lately, anyway. I only trust my cats these days, and I will miss them dearly, but they will understand, like they always have. Teacup stays with me till the end. He watches me, as if he knew. Because earlier tonight, I swallowed a whole bunch of pills. They're legal, of course, prescribed by my doctor for my sleeping problems. But I've taken 34 of them, all I could find in the cupboard. And now the room around me spins in a blurry tango as my heart slows down. Any second now, I will be dead. I feel calm. I'm ready for it. I've only got one thing to say now. Thanks for nothing. Goodbye. making that noise. 
Hello? Who's there? Answer me.
remember this place? Am I lost?
Welcome to my house, Susan Ashworth. I have been waiting for you, my dear. I knew you would turn up one fine day, Lexus. Who... who are you? I have so many names, it's hard to pick one. But I'm curious, who do you think I am? you just tell me? That's very much like you, Susan. You won't even try. You have given up on everything lately, haven't you? Why shouldn't I? Is there a great reward for trying? I didn't think so. Would you have tried if I had told you there was? Maybe. I don't know. Something that could change your life forever. No, there isn't. There never is. And yet, some people do great things to find it. I'm afraid I'm not one of them. What is this place? This, my dear is my humble kingdom, and this house is my castle. I rarely invite people in, just like you. I like my solitude. But you are a special guest, and I'm going to make an exception. Me? Special? I can tell you now that there's nothing special about me, lady. Don't bring yourself down, Susan Ashworth. Today, you are my guest of honor. What will happen next? Depends on you, Susan. Inside my house, there are dark hallways that lead to places you don't want to see. But there is also something that will make you want to return to where you came from and cherish Every single little breath you take. I'm going to make you an offer, Susan. It's a chance only a fool would refuse. Okay. An offer? What can you offer me? Let's come inside. It's getting cold out here. Please don't touch anything, dear. I wasn't going to. You lied to the whole world, Susan. And you lied to yourself. Now we can talk properly, my dear. Is there anyone else here? <laughs> Hi. I thought you liked being alone. Isn't that why you ran away from everyone? It doesn't matter. I was standing right behind you when you threw away all those photographs, you know? I brushed your hair every night you cried yourself to sleep. I saw everything. I know what you want, but it's not here. It's gone, and it will never, ever come again. I have no reason to live. Please. Just let me go. I tried. I really did. But it's never going to be okay. Who knows? Maybe. But one way or the other, 
This isn't the end of your story. It's only the beginning, my dear. And there are great things waiting for you. Believe me. I still don't really know who you are. I go by many names. I've never paid much notice to what the living call me. But there is one name the Fallen Ones use when I speak to them. I find it most accurate. The Queen of Maggots. Is that what you are? Why maggots? Because they feed on what's dead and gone. Dead and gone. I guess that's me. Will I be punished for taking my own life? Most people would be, but not you, Susan. You see, I watched you long enough to understand how you feel. I don't expect you to believe me, but I actually have sympathy for you. Who knows, I could be your only friend. The only friend in the whole wide world. So like I said, I am going to make you an offer. I want to help you. I will give you back your happiness in exchange for a simple task. Your life will change completely. You will be yourself again. And you will soon forget the sadness that has consumed your heart for years. What do you want me to do? Yes. I think it's time to explain. But where are my manners? They're still in the hall. This is not a place for a serious talk. Follow me to the next room. I'll tell you everything you need to know. What's your offer then? What can you fix that life has destroyed? Susan, death can fix nothing. But though we are both dead, I am not death. I might seem just like a strange old woman to you, but I'm just as powerful as gods. And I chose you, Susan Ashworth. I'll need you to go back and face five people. They're not ordinary people. They're very special, just like you, only in a slightly different way. What makes you think I want to go back? I finally did it. I killed myself. That's all I ever wanted. And yet, it turns out to be just another failure. I want this suffering to stop. Dear, dear Susan, you don't realize that the suffering never stops. Do you? It only gets worse. This place is a passage between the world of the living and the world of the dead. You enter one of these corridors and you never come back. But you don't cease to exist. You remain. I'm a failure. Why did you choose me? Aren't you afraid I will let you down, whatever it is I have to do? Most days, it's enough of a struggle to crawl out of bed. I don't see the point in anything. I just want to disappear. 
And I hate everyone else because they know how to be happy. Everywhere I turn, there are people filled with hope and will to live. All people so pitiful, they make me ashamed to be alive. I don't want them. There's nobody there for me. I am alone. I just want to vanish. This is the very reason I chose you, Susan Ashworth. I know how you feel, because I felt like this myself for a very long time. You and me are very much alike. If you succeed, you will never feel broken again. Those five people, who are they? The Parasites. That's what I call them. They don't know each other, but their destinies are bound together. You will have to keep your eyes open and be constantly on guard. Those people will want to get closer to you. They might even pretend they are your friends, but don't let that fool you. They have nothing but cruel intentions. They'll want to hurt you, Susan. They'll want to kill you. As homeless as they might appear, parasites are the evil scum of the earth, and they all deserve to die. Isn't my life bad enough without them? Don't be frightened. You will have a great advantage over them. They don't know that you know. Do you understand what it means? You will become my hunter serving punishment for their sins. A tool of destruction. A dark angel walking through the river of blood. You find your purpose in life and you see for the first time how satisfying it can be. But how will I recognize them? There isn't a great deal of people in your lonely life, is there, Susan? You will know when you see them. Bring those deceitful bastards in front of me, and we'll make them regret for everything they've done. Are you expecting me to kill them? No, Susan, I'm expecting you to fight for survival. To do everything you can to defend yourself. I know you're not a murderer. Quite the opposite, actually. You're a good person. But I also know that you don't want to suffer. And those people will want to cause you pain. They won't hesitate. In the end, you might have no choice. Think of it as gardening. If there were weeds among the flowers, you'd pull them out, wouldn't you? You'd get rid of them without thinking twice about it. I'm not really a gardening type, but I see your point. I'm glad. And remember this, you are not the only victim. If you don't stop them, the killing will continue. Innocent people will die. You have the opportunity to make the difference. And the chance to save yourself. I can't do this. It's too much. Dealing with criminals is a job for the police, not someone like me. Indeed, you are weak. That's why I have prepared a special gift for you. Immortality. You cannot die, Susan. You will always return to life no matter what happens to you. What? This is the last thing I wanted. Please, can't you just let me die? I've made the decision. As long as they are alive, you cannot die. This all must be just a weird dream. I don't believe you. Susan, see this door here? Let's go inside. I 
want to show you something that will help you make up your mind. Follow me. It's you, Susan. Come, please. Say hello. I don't want to look at it. Haven't I had enough yet? That body in the ambulance. Then the forest. But this place is... This is exactly what I was trying to run away from. I don't want to be here. Make it go away. I assumed it would be wise to give you a little taste of the suffering you would endure. I want you to understand that you can keep going long after you come. decision. The parasites are coming whether you want it or not. You haven't really got much choice. You must stand up for yourself. Fine. I'll do what you want. Excellent. I'm glad you have put your trust in me. back in the house yes but there is something else that must be done you cannot leave my kingdom before a sacrifice is made what isn't it enough already do not worry my child this is a mere formality i am speaking of the door to your world won't open unless you make a sacrifice of soul and a sacrifice of blood. It doesn't sound good at all. See those candles here? Just blow one out and that's it. Like I said, it's just a formality. Then on your way out, you will have to shed a few drops of blood. Not much, just a bit. Enough to open the door. How much exactly? Don't be afraid. It's easy. Anyone can do it. Just a sharp scratch. Is that how you used to say it? Tell me about the sacrifice of soul. Like I said, it's just a formality. See those candles here? Just blow one out and that's it. But which one? You can choose. It doesn't matter as long as you do it. Tell me about the sacrifice of blood. Like I said, it's just a formality. On your way out, you will have to shed a few drops of blood. Not much, just a bit. Enough to open the door. How much, exactly? Don't be afraid. It's easy. Anyone can do it. Just a sharp scratch. Is that how you used to say it? Fine. I'll do that. Wish me luck, strange lady. I do. When you leave my house, head to the field. 
That's where you should be. Goodbye, my child. I'm not going to be far. I've never been. You forgot to blow out the candle, Susan. How did you... Would you kindly do what I asked you? They left me no choice, Alice. Maybe one day you'll forgive me. See how easy that was? Now, head back to the field. You've got a job to do, Susan. What the? How did I get back here?
Yes, I do enjoy fine art. Thank you for noticing. There's a certain raw beauty to it that modern painters often fail to recreate. I always wanted to be an artist myself, but it'll be a long time before I can call myself that. I often say that patience are my canvas, but my job is more about restoration, obviously. I look at the damaged human minds and bring them back to their former beauty. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring you. No, it's not that. It's just... It's been a difficult couple of days. I'd really like to go home. Of course, and go home you will. As soon as we've done this little assessment, okay, you probably know how it works. I've read in your file you used to be a nurse. Yes, I know very well how it works. You want to check if I'm nuts? Well, I wouldn't use that expression, obviously. But yes, we have to make sure you're safe and figure out how to help you. Also, as a nurse yourself, you know there's always paperwork involved. These forms won't fill themselves. Honestly, Susan, you have nothing to worry about. This is just a formality. I could tell straight away that you are not nuts. Fine. What would you like to know? I will answer all your questions. Then I'll go home, take a long shower, and catch up on sleep. Wonderful. Let's see then. Where do we begin? She's awake, Doctor. Good evening. It's good to see you awake at last. You're in the Cedar Lake Hospital. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Would you confirm your name for me, please? Hmm. I can see you're very tired and sleepy. That's perfectly normal. You're on the ward now. Your condition is stable. Earlier on, we did a CT scan and it shows there's no permanent damage to your brain. All your organs are fine too. You're a very lucky lady, Susan. You might experience extreme tiredness and lethargy for a couple of days, but that should soon pass. I would advise plenty of rest now. The nurses on this ward will take it from here. Please, let them know if you need anything. Take care, Susan. Yeah? Please, don't try to speak. What did you say? Don't worry, Mrs. Ashworth. Your arm is fine. No, no, no. There was nothing wrong with your arm, darling. Now calm down. Would you like me to get you some water? Let me get you a drink. I'll be back in a second. Sorry, Susan. Did I wake you? I have to take your blood pressure. Two seconds and I'm gone. My name is Liz, by the way. I... I'm sorry. I know this isn't very nice. Believe me, I hate waking people up just for this. But being a nuisance is part of my stupid job, unfortunately. Oof, I hate this place. Tell you what, Susan. Can I call you Susan? So anyway, I shouldn't say it, but you know I'm going to anyway. You are so lucky. It's crazy. You, doing what you'd done, and her, walking in, seeing what she saw. That was a chance. One in a million. I'm not making any sense again, am I? I'm tired. They're working us to death here, you know. Modern day slavery. One day I'll tell them what I really think. I swear I will. Ah, and here it is. You've got the blood pressure of an 18-year-old. Just wanted to say you're lucky, I think. And that I hope 
You've changed your mind about some things. Got to go, but I'll see you later. You take care, sweetheart, yeah? dream N no just a dream like any other oh that's fine then I nearly woke you up you see so you tossing and turning as I came in here you looked like you were having a horrible nightmare I get nightmares sometimes. I get them, and I can't wake up. Or sometimes I dream that I'm falling. Those are strange dreams. Because I think I like them. I keep falling, but I never fall, if you know what I mean. Never hit the ground. Never. What was your name again? I forgot to introduce myself, didn't I? I always do that. So sorry, Susan. My name is Elizabeth. But you can call me Liz, like everyone else. You're here a lot. Every time I open my eyes, I see you. They make auxiliaries do crazy hours, you. Seriously, I feel like I've got no life sometimes. I'll be here till the morning. To be honest, I keep coming here to hide. Please don't give me away. I just want to rest my legs for two minutes, that's all. What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then... up here and I saw you. Can you now tell me who found me and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My daughter? Yes. Why? Why'd you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied? It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at 7 in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. You went to the intensive care unit where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. I call it Die Ward because all the patients who come here want to die. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. You have to be careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives.
When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. Look, I shouldn't say that, but you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you, and he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? Yeah, I had a great dad. I have very fond memories of my father. He was always there for me, no matter what I did. He never got angry or upset. I suppose I never really gave him any reasons to be. I was a good child, not perfect. But then again, no one's perfect. Whatever made me try to kill myself, it definitely has nothing to do with him. Where is he now? He died six years ago. Cancer. Do you miss him? Of course I miss him. How can you even ask me that? It's my job to ask these questions, Susan. Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? I can't complain. My mum was great. She brought me up well. Me and her. We were like best friends. Like soulmates. We did everything together. She passed away seven years ago. When Dad first got diagnosed with cancer, it was too much for her. He kept pretending he was fine, but she just couldn't take it. Her heart gave up. She died quickly. My father kept fighting it. Another eight months of illness and intensive chemo finally beat him though. He thought he was unbeatable, but he wasn't. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes and we will talk about something else. I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. 
Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this. Is Liz here? And who's Liz? That young nurse who was here last night. Black hair, very chatty. She said her name was Liz. Um, I'm sorry, a lot of people come through here. I can't remember everyone's name. Can you return to your bed now, please? It's nearly time for your medication. I can't be chasing around after every single patient. Beg your pardon? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Please do not touch these. They are all confidential documents. Yeah? Well, maybe you shouldn't leave them out on the desk for everyone to see. If you are looking for something to read, we have some magazines for patients here. Thanks, but I think I'll pass. Let me through. I'm going home. Can I see the discharge letter first? If you haven't been discharged by the doctors, I'm afraid I can't let you through. 
You have no right. I am a free person and I'll do what I want. I'm not staying here a minute longer. I'll have to see the letter first. May I ask what your name is? I'll come back later. Please do, Mum. We'll be right here. talk for a minute i can't talk please just leave me alone oh i mean you no harm i'm trapped here just like you trapped i don't know it's just so hard to think without it but you're a stranger and you're not one of those lovely nurses either they look after me so well i trust the nurses like i trusted my mother i just want to talk i need your help Unless it's mother who sent you. Was it her? Please tell me it was her. Um yeah, sure. I'm a good friend of your mother. I miss her so much. I can't remember you very well. But you should know this. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. Yeah, sure I do. Now, let me ask you. What is it? Oh. Well, what is my mother's name? Hmm. Uh... Alice. No. You're wrong. Leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. But I know it. Let me just think for a second. Elizabeth. No. You're wrong. Leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone.
you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. But I know it. Let me just think for a second. I don't know. No, of course you don't. Leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone. Sorry, ma'am, can't let you through. We'll need to see a discharge letter from your doctor first. Right. It seems that a discharge letter is the only ticket out of here. Someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? I'm feeling a bit woozy. Are you really? You look fine to me. No, I I'm really not feeling well. Fine, I'll call the doctor for you. But I can't help it if he's busy and can't get here straight away. In the meantime, I know how to make you feel better. I think it's time we give you some medication. Can you please tell me your name and your date of birth? Anne Burton, born in 1975. Let me just check her name band quickly. Miss Ashworth, I think you got a little confused there. Drink this liquid now. It'll make you all better. Are you insane? I'm not taking any medication. I'm not ill. Okay, we are prepared for this. Jim, can you come in, please? You must be kidding me. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm going to give you an injection. You'll feel a sharp scratch. Hold it for me, would you? Now, 
Go back to your room and rest. You'll be able to relax and have a great sleep. drugs have worn off and I feel better now, but I can't let them do that to me again. I need to get out of here.
Go away. Please, just leave me alone. Mother's always told me not to accept any gifts from strangers. much better now. Can you please discharge me? I'm glad to hear that. But I can't discharge you until Dr. X sees you. He should be doing his round very soon. Please return to your bed and wait for him, all right? Please do not touch these. They are all confidential documents. I was only going to tidy up. I'm sorry. Are you one of the housekeepers? Why did you dress up as a patient? I just can't stand mess, that's all. And there's no need to be sarcastic. Who's being sarcastic? Shall we swap our name bands? Mother always told me not to talk to strangers. I can't take it. I, I'm being good now. Only talk to my nurses and good friends. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. But I know it. Let me just think for a second. Sheila. Yes. It was my mother who sent you, after all. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. But my head's all messed up. So, let's have a little chat, sweetheart. supposed to get out we must stay here do what they say take pills they give us sometimes if i behave they give me the red stuff i wait for it i'm being good what is this red stuff it's a drug my favorite one red stuff takes the pain away i must stay here good nurses have been most kind they always remember they know I'm suffering, but it is not the same as the drugs I see in my dreams. On the other side of the mirror, there's a spider's heart full of drugs. I just can't seem to find it anymore. I see. Feel like sharing? What's your name? There is nothing to share. Everyone died everyone and my treat my red stuff it's not the same I keep lying to myself I'm a mean little liar always have been 
This vein, you see, it goes straight to my heart. That's why it hurts so much. I wish I could, just one more time. But it's all lost now. Everything. I was always happy to settle for a consolation prize, you know? What exactly is this little treat you mentioned? It's the red teardrop of pure happiness. They bring it, I drink it down, and my pain goes away. Without it, I just feel so angry. It's like I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's funny, but I just get so fucking angry sometimes. I'm dying, I think. We're all dying, I heard. She said I'd go to hell for it, but I didn't do anything. I didn't know. Does he know? Who? Him! Right. Okay. No, probably not. I need the red medicine. I need it now. I must be a good girl. I must be a nice girl. Maybe I could get you some of that stuff. Do you know where they keep it? Oh, they have it hidden well. You can't get there. Or maybe you can. I see it in my dreams sometimes. It's where the nurses are. But in my dream, there are no nurses there. I see it, but I can't get it. It's so near and yet so far. I can still hear the broken heartbeat of the spider's heart. I'll talk to you later, yeah? Yes, go. Be careful, they're watching us. And remember, we must be nice to earn the red stuff. Always be nice. Poor woman. I've found this red stuff you were talking about, but are you absolutely certain it won't harm you? Don't be silly. Of course it won't. Fine. I hope you know what you're doing. How about you give me your name band in return? Is that okay? Oh, yeah. I don't mind. Take it. Thank you for your help. Please do not touch these. They are all confidential documents. Yeah? Well, maybe you shouldn't leave them out on the desk for everyone to see. If you are looking for something to read, we have some magazines for patients here. Thanks, but I think I'll pass. I'd like to go home now. Well, so would I. But there are procedures and a system in place. I can't just let you go like that. What? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Bell, is there an emergency? I just wanted to remind you that I'm ready to go home. Oh, is that so? Well, guess what? I haven't forgotten. 
It takes time. I could lose my job if I don't follow the correct procedures. Why do I bother? I think it's time we give you some medication. Can you please tell me your name and your date of birth? Anne Burton, born in 1975. Let me just check your name band quickly. Anne Burton, that's fine. I'm just going to check your name band now to confirm that. I think you got a little confused there, Miss Burton. Good job I spotted this. You wouldn't want to get the wrong medication, would you? Here's your sedative and your methadone. I'm sure you were waiting for this, weren't you, sweetheart? I'm just going to check your name band now to confirm that. I think you got a little confused there, Miss Burton. Good job I spotted this. You wouldn't want to get the wrong medication, would you? Here's your sedative and your methadone. I'm sure you were waiting for this, weren't you, sweetheart? That's a good girl. Now, drink it down. You'll feel much better. Now, go back to your room and rest. You'll be able to relax and have a great sleep. The drugs have worn off and I feel better now, but I can't let them do that to me again. I need to get out of here. much better now. Can you please discharge me? I'm glad to hear that. But I can't discharge you until Dr. X sees you. He should be doing his round very soon. Please return to your bed and wait for him, all right? Can I make a phone call, please? Oh, yes, of course. But the phone's being used at the moment. Can you please come back in five minutes? Thanks. Sorry, Mom, can't let you through. We'll need to see a discharge letter from your doctor first. Right. It seems that a discharge letter is the only ticket out of here.
someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? The toilet's blocked. What? Ah, oh, well, that's hardly an emergency. It is when you need to use it urgently, like I do. I see. Fine, I'll sort it out. Just give me a minute. Ah, oh, it's the gloves. Again! I guess I'll have to get my hands dirty since the cleaner's called in sick. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am, can't let you through. We'll need to see a discharge letter from your doctor first. Here. Are you happy now? Yes, that seems fine. Can I just check your name band to confirm that you are indeed Anne Burton? Oh, all right. I didn't realize you knew how to read. There you go. Can I go now? Of course. Thank you, ma'am. We'll see you soon. No, you won't. Now get out of my way. And you must be Susan Ashworth. Um, well, perhaps I am. Do you mind if I ask you where you're heading to? I was just going for a little walk, stretch my legs, get some fresh air. Give it a rest. I'm not going anywhere. Miss Ashworth, please relax. There's been a mistake. You have been prescribed wrong medication. I apologize sincerely on behalf of my team and the hospital. But luckily we managed to spot it on time. On time? You have no idea what I've been through? Once again, I'm truly sorry. I promise no more drugs will be given to you. I personally guarantee you will have a good, peaceful sleep tonight, and you can be discharged in the morning. Why can't I go tonight? I want to go now! I'm really sorry, but we can't legally discharge suicidal patients without a full psychiatric assessment. It's too late for it now, but I promise we'll have a chat in my office first thing in the morning, okay? And then you can go home. Is that all right? I haven't really got much choice, have I? Now I'd like to ask you some questions about your life, Susan. You might find them very personal, but it's important that you answer me as honestly as possible. Fine. Let's get it over with then, shall we? I'd like to go home at last. Of course, I understand. So, Susan, let's see. Are you living alone at the moment? I live on my own, and it suits me just fine. I don't need anyone. People mostly bore me. Sometimes they annoy me or upset me. I'm happy with how things are at the moment. I have my little bit of space, and it's my own. It's private. I'd like to keep it that way. What do you do for a living? I'm between jobs at the moment. I'll find something soon, but it's been difficult. I didn't feel that great. I felt weak and powerless and tired. Most of the time, I felt really awfully tired. Typical depression symptoms. We can give you something for that. You'll feel stronger and motivated. 
I admire your faith in modern medication, Doctor. I hope you're right. Describe to me what your mornings look like. What is the first thing you do each day? I lie in bed awake. Can't bring myself to open my eyes. I see. I'm scared of the coming day. I know already what'll happen. And what's that, Susan? Nothing, really. Nothing at all happens in this stupid, empty life. Sometimes I wonder why I even get dressed. What for? For who? I hardly ever get out of the flat anyway. Would you say that you feel safer at home than outside? Not really. I don't feel that safe at all. How can you feel safe these days anyway? You can be living next door to a murderer who'll blow your head off for a bit of fun. Local kids have set an old man on fire the other day. They filmed him as he burned to his death. I knew this woman. She slipped on a wet bathroom floor, cracked her head open, and broke a leg. She lied there bleeding for two days, unable to move. By the time they found her, it was already too late. Susan, taking risks is a part of life. What do you think is missing in your life? Or rather, what is one thing that you think would make your life better? It would be nice to have more money, I guess. Sure, of course. Don't we all? Have you ever attended group therapy for depression or some other form of counseling? Yes, it didn't help much, as you can see. Just something to think about. I can see you're really willing to open up and talk about your issues. That's a positive sign. I... I haven't really talked about my feelings for a long time. You're doing very well so far. Do you have problems sleeping? Every night. I take pills for that. There aren't any left now, though. In the light of recent events, I think you should stay off those pills for a while. I suggest you drink some hot milk before bed instead. Would you describe for me how you feel at the moment? I feel fine now. I feel like I want to change my life for the better. Not really sure how yet, but I really want to try. Do you find it hard to concentrate? Yes, sometimes. Do you drink alcohol, Susan? No. That's good. Alcohol is a powerful depressant. I never really liked drinking. Excellent. Sometimes, when life gets too much and people feel sad or upset, they think about suicide. Do you often think about suicide? No, of course not. I don't know what got into me. It's hard to explain why I did it. I must have thought there was no other options left. But I never used to think about it, or plan it. It just... happened. As if I'd suddenly lost control. I knew what I was doing was wrong, and yet I was unable to stop it. Strange, isn't it? Please, in your own words, try to explain to me, why did you really try to take your own life, Susan? Nothing was
was making me happy anymore. There wasn't a single thing that would bring a smile to my face. I kept thinking, won't it be better if I just disappear? I tried. I really tried to find something. Took a long bath. Picked up a book. Watched some television. But I just couldn't get into anything. All those things seemed like worthless distractions. And I myself felt obsolete. Needless. It just would get worse and worse. By the afternoon, I realized I cried for the past three hours. I... I didn't even know I'd been crying until I went to the bathroom and saw my face in the mirror. I looked like a ghost. I looked like I was dead already, you know? And then I saw the sleeping pills. I thought, why not? And I did it. Do you feel as if you're a burden or that life isn't worth living? Sometimes, when I feel really low, I just... I used to think everyone would be happier without me. But I guess people don't really care. Besides, I live alone. Who could I be a burden to? What makes you feel better? used to make me happy. I mean, my old job, when I was a nurse. It's been a while since I left. Why did you? I realized I hated the whole system, you know? I didn't really fit in that well. And yesterday's events reassured me I made a good decision quitting too. What makes you feel worse? hard to say. It could be anything. Sometimes it could be just little things. The way my hair looks. Shoes I can't find. When I run out of milk. I get angry with myself for being clumsy. For not being able to cheer up and just get on with things like everyone else. Have you imagined your funeral and how people will react to your death? Probably nobody would come anyway. Can you imagine it? Now that's a sad picture. Loved by no one. Missed only by some cats. No tears shed for me. No flowers on my grave. But that's okay. I never liked flowers. I wouldn't miss that. Finally, I'd like you to tell me about Eric. Eric? Yes, your husband. I believe this might be important. What can you tell me about your relationship? What had happened between you two? nothing to talk about. Hmm. Fine. I suppose you've opened enough for one day. Okay. One more question. This is just a formality. But I have to ask, are you going to do it again? 
That's a hard one. I don't know. But hey, I've got it. The answer is no, I'm not. Thank you very much. Excellent. We are nearly done here. There's just one more thing I must clear with you. What exactly happened last night? Well, after I'd met you outside the ward yesterday, I went back to my room and fell asleep. I slept really well, considering what happened earlier. But then someone woke me up. It was the same nurse who was so friendly with me the first night. She said we needed to talk. We must go, Susan. You are not safe here. But... Please, you must follow me, quickly. I went after her. The ward seemed very quiet. It must have been late at night. Hurry! Wait for me. Tell me what's going on here. security guys were gone. She pointed at the corridor and said, You go first. I'll explain everything in a minute. Susan, if we don't escape now, they're going to hurt you. Please trust me. I know a way out of here. I'll help you escape. Let's go down this corridor. I'll be right behind you. someone coming. Damn it! We can't go through there. Let's turn back, Susan. I know another way. Turn left here. We can use the maintenance lift to get us out of this place. What are we doing on the roof? Liz. What the hell are you doing? And why is there blood on your clothes? Liz. It's quicker than the stairs. And besides, all the doors are locked anyway. This is the only way out of here. The only escape. Let's both jump. It won't hurt, you'll see. This is a bad idea. Come down and we'll talk. I've made up my mind. I need to end this suffering now. Besides, I have no one to live for anyway. No one ever listened to me. No one ever cared. I listened. You're a nice girl. You have your whole life ahead of you. You listened. Did you really? Of course I did. You talk a lot, but I've always been a good listener. I liked talking to you. So do you remember that story then? The one I told you the other night? The one about the woman in A and E? Actually, I don't think you told me that story. Maybe I didn't. Or maybe you just didn't pay attention like everyone else. But, okay, I can prove to you that I listened. Just don't jump, please. You can prove it? Fine. I'll give you a second chance. Did I tell you about my flatmate? Did I tell you what one of them does for a living? 
If you really listened, you will remember this one. She's a stripper. Yes. Or at least that's what I think she is. You've listened. I just wish other people did. I'm sure they do. It can't be that bad. What do you know? Why do you care anyway? I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. I thought you of all people knew how it feels. When you're trapped and you can't trust anyone. Look, I'm sure there must be someone who cares about you. My colleagues don't care, my family don't care, even my fucking boyfriend never cared. He said he needed to go find himself. Did I tell you when he broke up with me? On Valentine's Day. Yes, Valentine's Day. You've got this one right. But it's not enough. Don't feel responsible. You didn't cause me this pain, this suffering. I have to do this to be free again. Jump with me, Susan. Do it while you still can. No! After that, I went back. I tried telling people about Liz, but they all thought I was crazy again and didn't believe me. And you were absolutely sure you saw Liz jump off this building? You know, it doesn't matter. I just want to finish this and get some fresh air. Susan, I know Liz well. She wouldn't do something like that. As a matter of fact, I saw her this morning. She's fine. I'd like you to come with me and see her. Say hi. Make sure she's all right. Stop treating me like I'm crazy. Fine. I'll go. I don't even care that much anyway. The door is locked. I plan ahead, Susan. I had a feeling in my gut, and my gut's never wrong. I feel like I really got to know you, though. I'm very sorry you've had such a difficult life. I like your green eyes and your sleek cheekbones. You're a clever girl, Susan, but the sadness has poisoned you for too long. There is no coming back from it. It's worth. I would have let you go if it wasn't for Liz.
Who... who are you? I am the Crow, of course. I will get you out of here. Unless you don't want to think. I thought so. There are two doors leading out of this place. One of them will simply take Susan back to where she belongs. But behind the other one, there is a great reward for her. It's something she always wanted. Something she longs for every single day. Where are those doors? I can't see them. Just walk back to the right side of the stage. My dear little Susan can't miss them. Does Susan like my girls? I knew she would. Whatever they are, tell them to stop staring. But they are here to guide, Susan. They are the guardians of the doors. They know which doors you should enter to get the rewards. But there is one problem. There's always a problem. I'm not even surprised. Which door should I go through? I will leave that to Susan's own best judgment. But this might be her only chance to find what she had lost. Wasted. And Susan will never get it back. Susan has one question. And she can only ask one of them. She must use it wisely. Fine. I can do that. But what's the catch? It's very simple. One of my girls always tells the truth. While the other one always lies. And I'm guessing you can't tell me which is which? It's something I've forgotten myself a long time ago, Susan. But does it really matter? One question is all Susan needs to find the right door. That'll teach you to stop staring, you horrible, ugly doll. Which door should I not enter? 